we're going to cover some pretty advanced stuff here, but it's really incredible stuff in terms of from an analytical perspective. I mean, what you, um, you know, using some of these techniques in this way um, showcases uh, some advanced forecasting logic, but you could actually utilize these techniques in a number of different ways. So just understanding and learning how you can piece together all these different DAX techniques is really going to set you up in your, your own environments and in, in the analysis that you do yourself, but this is just a way to showcase it. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna uh, go through some advanced forecasting logic. Now I just wanna set the scene here for you. So we've got, we've got some information. So in this case, I'm just gonna start with something simple like total sales. And all I've done there is I've summed up the total revenue column, very, very simple stuff. But if we look down here, if we look at this table here, you'll see that the very last piece of information or last sale we have made was on the 31st of August. Now, for this example, we've got to think we, we are actually sitting on the 31st of uh, the 8th, 2016. And we, want to, we, we need to see, well, are we going to meet our forecasts? Uh, and in this case, we don't have any forecasts, so we're going to create forecasts, which is what we would do. But then we're going to see well how how we can see how we're tracking uh, with our total sales, and but we want to compare it to our forecast and then analyze well, are we are we actually going to make it? And on top of that, we're going to do it dynamically for each different product that we sell. Cool. So there's going to be a few steps here. Some of them advanced. You're probably not going to get it uh, all of them um, straight away. But that's you know that's the power of video. You can you can you can stop. You can start. You can go back. So on and so forth. And I highly recommend uh, going over this a number of different times if you want to embed some of these techniques in your mind. Now the first thing we have to do here is we need a forecast because we don't have one. This is just a simple data model with total sales, which is just historical information. Now you could bring in a forecast a number of different ways here, but I'm just going to show how you could create a simple one. Now. All I'm gonna do for 2016 is I'm gonna project what we achieved in 2015 into 2016, okay? So this is how you do it. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna call this sales uh, last year, and I'm gonna go calculate total sales, and then I'm gonna go same period last year, and then I'm gonna put in dates. So this is gonna give us the, for the same period last year, what the sales were. So if we now jump to, if we sort it the other way around, you'll see that the first piece of data was on the 1st of June. And if we go to the 1st of June 2015, you'll see that that is now reflected with the sales last year total. But we need to go one step further here. We need to say, well, what is our 2016 forecast? We only care about what happened last year in the year 2016. So I'll just come down to 2016 and I'll show you that we only really want our data to start here and then go for the entire 2016. So to do that, we need to go 2016 forecast. And it's pretty simple, it's pretty simple. We just need to go calculate. And again, we need to go total sales. We need to change the context of the calculation here, and that's what we do with calculate. But really all we're doing is we're filtering out information that isn't in 2016. And we can do that with a filter statement. And so I'm just gonna go filter the dates table where the year the year is equal to 2016, like this. And what this is going to do is it's literally going to get rid of, uh, it's going to basically blank out any date that is not 2016 for this forecast. And so if I drag this into a table here and then I jump down to 2016, all the way down to 2016, you'll see that's when my data starts. It starts on the 1st of the 1st, 2016. And if we go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see that it doesn't actually go down, but that is because actually this is not correct. It needs to be total sales last year. My apologies. So this actually needs to be sales last year. And then now this is actually gonna project all the way down to, so it's gonna start at 2016, which is, which is great. And now it's actually reflecting the last year number, which is what we wanted. But then if we go down here, you'll see that this actually goes all the way to December like we wanted it to. So if we go to 2016 now, we now have a total sales and a 2016 forecast. So I'm just going to get rid of my sales last year and I'll showcase it on a chart like so. And you can see here that 
We've got our total sales by day and our forecasted sales, which is just a projection of the year before. Now this, this chart really shows me nothing. I can't really garner any insight out of that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna then turn these into cumulative totals. And we're gonna look at these cumulatively and we're gonna be able to draw far more insight from that. So first thing we need to do is we need to go, we need to calculate cumulative sales. And we need to use the cumulative total pattern. So I'm just gonna go calculate total sales and then I'm gonna go filter uh, and then go all selected by date. And I want the dates because we are gonna start filtering by a year potentially here or, year, or month and year or quarter and year and you wanna make sure that all of the dates can be, um, the filters can be taken off. And then I'm gonna go date is less than or equal to max date. So we've got cumulative total pattern, which is great. And so if I add this to the canvas, you'll see that the cumulative total uh, in the table now um, goes up for all the changes in total sales. But we can reuse this and we can say, well, let's work out our cumulative 2016 forecast. And then all I've got to do is sub in the 2016 forecast in here. Just type in forecast and then I get 2016 forecast, push enter. And then if I drag that in, you'll see that this is now the cumulative total of this 2016 forecast, which is really, again, just the projected 2015 results, but now I've turned them into a cumulative total that I can compare to our cumulative sales of this year. So this is us getting quite advanced, right? But now if we turn this into a visualization, into an area chart, you can see that now we can analyze this information cumulatively. We can compare cumulatively how we're going. Now we do run into an issue here in that this uh, cumulative total is projected all the way along even though there's no information. And we probably don't want that. Uh, and the way we can fix it, we can fix it very easily. And all you've got to do is go if, if is blank. And we I use this very often, uh, this, this pattern. So if is blank, total sales. So if there's literally no sales uh, on that day, then we want to go, we actually want to return blank. And so that's going to um, that's going to get rid of all information that that is forward from the particular date that we're in. So if I push enter, you'll see that that disappears. And now we've got you know we're starting to see well we, we can over, we're overlaying we're overlaying our current sales versus our forecasting sales. So you can hopefully you can see well we can start now finding um, greater insight into into you know are we actually going to achieve these forecasts? Now what we can do from here is we can go well. What is our uh, sales versus our forecast? So I'm gonna add another measure, a branch into another measure, and I'm gonna go sales um, versus forecast. Or well, maybe we wanna switch that round. We wanna go forecast versus sales. And then I'm gonna go cumulative 2016 forecast minus cumulative sales. And we could turn this into a visualization just by itself. And so I'm just gonna copy and paste that chart and bring in this visualization here. And you'll see that it doesn't really uh, generate any insight for us at the moment because we've got this issue here where we uh, have no data and it's just basically um, taking it as zero. So what we need to do again is put in that is blank logic. And so I'm gonna go if is blank total sales then I want it to equal blank, and if not, then I want it to equal the result. And that's gonna get rid of those issues. And then we can now see, well, tr tr how are we going through time versus our cumulative forecast? So we can kind of get a really good gauge here of, you know, are we gonna make it back to our forecast? Are we gonna get above our forecast? How have we tracked versus our forecast throughout the year? And then now check this out. All of this is connected in the data model. I can bring in, say, my products here, turn this into a slicer, and then I can see, well, how are we going on our individual products? And so I can click into product 10, and see, well, how are we going because the forecast? It looks like uh, sales is above forecast, so we're looking pretty good. We may actually wanna change this round, it totally depends on what you wanna do, but then we can dynamically select into all the different products and see how we're tracking. See, are we gonna make forecasts for all these different products? 
So we've gone over a number of uh, concepts there, but they're all they're all pretty pretty cool concepts, right? And you could use these in a variety of different ways. You know, first of all, we forecasted out, we created a forecast. Basically, you could you could make that as complex as you want, but we we kept it pretty simple. And then we used a cumulative totals to then visualize it better. And then we actually compared, and we were able to say, well, how are we actually tracking? Are we um, how have we tracked uh, through to this this point in time? And then uh, what's our best guess based on the numbers we've got of are we going to make uh, forecasts uh, for the for the year or the financial year and so on and so forth.